what we're going over today, hopefully you guys watched the sarcomere, the sliding filament theory and stuff like that, because this is leading up to that and a little bit surrounding that whole thing. All right, so we'll talk about the neuromuscular junction, the concept of a motor unit, a little bit about the fiber types, and maybe if we have time, we'll talk about skeletal muscle aging and what happened. I talked in the other video a little bit about the different types of muscle tissue. And what I want to mention here is that, you know, they're all contractile tissue. They're all excitable in a way. One of the major differences, and we'll get again, talk about this when we get to the nervous system, is that skeletal muscle, as opposed to cardiac and smooth muscle, is considered a voluntary. That is, you can voluntarily flex your elbow and extend your elbow and flex your neck and extend your neck. Your cardiac and smooth muscle is under involuntary control, right? It's by the autonomic nervous system or stretch reflexes or its own, it's got its own little system in here. If I wanna quicken the pace of my heart or slow it down, I can't do it directly, right? I can't just will it to happen. I could meditate or I could think of the upcoming exam or something and make it go slower or faster, right? But I can't voluntarily control it like you can this, right? It doesn't mean all your muscle actions all throughout the day are voluntary, but it just means you can voluntarily move stuff, right? Such a skeletal muscle. So that means that this guy right here, he's sitting there, here's his brain. He's got a thought in his brain and he wants to move his hand down for some reason. So that thought is generated, electrical signals are generated. It goes down into his spinal cord. It reaches the spinal cord here to this red motor neuron. And then that electrical signal is going to go out and activate that muscle, right? So in this case, he wants to put his hand on a flame, right? And his brain is making him do that voluntarily, right? So it's going down there and then he's got this other willpower to keep it there. So it's all voluntary. It doesn't have to be, right? You could have the opposite thing where, ouch, my finger's hurting and there's gonna be an automatic spinal reflex to take it off, right? But you could, if you wanted, do this. Sometimes you do. All right, so when you get down to that muscle stuff that we're talking about, here's the motor neuron that was leaving the spinal cord. It branches off and branches off until it ends up in a little spot on an individual muscle called the motor end plate. And that's where it's going to innervate the actual muscle fiber, right? So you're looking at a single muscle cell. This is a single spot on the membrane called the motor end plate. And this is the axon or branch of the axon coming out. That's where it's going to, the electrical signal is going to come down here and then it's going to cause a release as we'll see. So what you learned, if you watch the videos, was that when we talked about the sliding filament theory, the binding of the actin, the myosin head to the actin molecule right here required the presence of calcium, right? And for calcium to be present, that required a, an electrical signal to come down these T tubules right here and cause a, some kind of reaction that released calcium. You'll learn all about it in physiology. To get an electrical signal down that T tubule, you'll need an electrical signal going down the sarcolemma of that muscle cell, right? So the sarcolemma is the plasma membrane, basically your cell membrane, right? To get that electrical signal going down that cell, you need it to start somewhere. So this is what we're gonna chart. Talk about the initiation of that signal at the motor end plate. So again, the motor end plate is that region of the sarcolemma that is full of receptors right here. And then here is your neuron and its axon terminal. So this is a neuron, this is a muscular, this is a junction. So this is a neuromuscular junction. Here is, we'll just go over quickly the sequence of events that occurs right here. And this will be useful for the nervous system because this is basically that junction is a synapse. And so you have an electrical signal for right now, just think of it as, as a magical impulse traveling down the axon, traveling down the membrane right here. And something about that electrical impulse causes these things to open where calcium is going to flood in here. And what that calcium does is talk to these vesicles right there and tell them to fuse to the plasma membrane and release the acetylcholine. That's that ACH right here. That's a neurotransmitter 
Right? So it's going to, the nerve impulse, bottom line is it causes a release of neurotransmitter at the neuromuscular junction. The calcium part, you don't have to know. That's just what happens right there. So the little red dots are the neurotransmitter. They're going to diffuse across this little cleft because these aren't directly connected, the synaptic cleft. Right here, that's the second sequence of events. And these receptors here in green are embedded within your sarcolemma right here. They're going to receive those little red dots right here. So acetylcholine receptors bind the acetylcholine neurotransmitter. Okay, and for your purposes, what you wanna know is that binding, this binding of the neurotransmitter to the receptor is what initiates that impulse, right? It's a complicated event, how that happens. It's depolarization, all this stuff. It's anatomy, it's magic. This is what you wanna know right here. So the muscle impulse from there, you're gonna generate a local impulse that's gonna spread because muscle is an excitable tissue. It's gonna spread throughout the entire muscle. And then it's gonna go down to those T-tubules what is it going to do there? It's going to cause release of calcium. Calcium is going to expose those active binding sites on the actin and cause the binding of the myosin head, right? So that whole sequence of events, this is where it starts. The last sequence of events right here. So a test question could be like order this sequence of events, right? The last sequence of events is the neurotransmitter that has flooded this synaptic cleft right there is going to be cleared. There's enzymes that degrade it. That's usually the case with acetylcholine. You don't want this to be continuously activated, so you clear those neurotransmitters. This is the sequence of events that occurs, right? And this is what you want to know. So here is your, again, your axon. Here's the term axon terminal releasing acetylcholine into that synaptic cleft and onto the neural motor end plate right there, causing an impulse that travels down the entire muscle fiber, really both ways. And then we'll travel down those T tubules, cause release of calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum, right? Releasing calcium onto those, the sarcomeres. Can you just explain the difference between the synaptic cleft and the motor end plate? Yeah, so the motor end plate is part of the sarcolemma, this silver okay. gray part of the muscle cell. And then the cleft is the space in between the neuron and the muscle right there. So neurons diffuse across the synaptic cleft onto the motor end plate with the receptors embedded within it. So your motor end plate is just an area that's packed full of these acetylcholine receptors. But that's the sequence of events at the neuromuscular junction, which will lead to muscle contraction. And while I'm here, I wanna stress that there's a single neuromuscular junction for each muscle fiber despite the fact that these muscle fibers can be very long, as in your sartorius, the longest muscle in your body where a single cell can easily be over a foot long. So the impulse spreading from a single neuromuscular junction on that fiber is gonna spread pretty much simultaneously to the entire muscle fiber so that the whole fiber contracts as a single unit. So this microanatomy fact is also gonna to relate to the next topic of discussion, the concept of a motor unit. See you then.